success was inherited from the experience that native Indian cultures gained from living in the Amazon for thousands of years. This understanding of the forests and rivers is essential for the caboclos because of their reliance on fish and game. Temperatures are relatively high throughout the year in the Amazon. Rainfall is much more variable and there are distinct wet and dry seasons. In most of the Amazon, the main rains fall between December and May. The vast area of the Amazon Basin is pounded by more than two meters of rainfall each year. Near the Andes, the total can exceed three meters. After several months of heavy rains, the river channels become swollen, and then the floodplains are invaded by rising water. They remain flooded for up to seven months each year. Water level can rise two or three meters each month and quickly the lower part of the flooded forest become completely submerged. As water level rises, even some of the animals living in the forest canopy must face drastically different conditions. The tree-toed sloth is usually seen motionless and hanging upside down in the top of the tree. However, sloths are excellent swimmers. They appear to swim in slow motion, but are quite able to cross river channels as well as swim inside the flooded forest. Their swimming ability may be the principal reason why they are so widespread in the Amazon. Not even the world's largest river is a barrier to them. At the peak of the high water period, the flooded forest is transformed into a rich orchard. Many of the fruits hang just above the water. Most of the trees and vines begin to fruit at the time of the floods to take advantage of the water to disperse their seeds. However, dispersal by water is not always successful since many of these seeds are especially high in protein and fat and this makes them attractive food for many animals. In most forests, birds, mammals and insects are the usual seed eaters. In the flooded forest, however, fish are the most important seed predators. The tambaki is the largest fish that is a seed eater. It reaches over a meter in length and can weigh more than 30 kilograms. Tambaki have huge nasal flaps which help increase the flow of water into the nose, thus enhancing their keen sense of smell. This helps them to locate fruiting trees by smelling them out. Seeds have evolved various ways to protect themselves against predators. The rubber tree seed is encased in a shell nearly as hard as that of a Brazil nut. This protects it against most animals. 
Amazingly, the tambaki has incredibly strong jaws and massive molars that are reminiscent of those of a horse. With this specialization, the large fish is able to crack the hard nuts to get at the nutritious kernels inside. When rubber trees are fruiting, tambaki lurk beneath them to take the seeds as soon as they fall into the water. These giant nutcrackers destroy a large part of each year's crop. Fish can also be seed sowers. The seeds of fleshy fruits often escape being cracked in the fish's mouth and pass unharmed through the gut. This journey through the fish may also fertilize the seeds and help in their germination. High water is a time of plenty for fruit-eating fish. They accumulate large amounts of fat in their bodies as an energy reserve that can be used when food is scarce. These fattened fish also make good food. Dolphins are the top predators in Amazonian waters. Using its highly developed echolocation and its long beak armed with many pointed teeth, the Boto dolphin is well equipped to pinpoint and capture fish. The juvenile dolphin insists on sharing its mother's catch. Perhaps because the mother is willing to share her fish, a young boto dolphin will remain at its parent's side for more than a year. Botos consume enormous quantities of fish in order to sustain their active lives. An adult may eat up to four or five kilos of fish every day. Caboclos understand the intimate relationship between the fish and the forest. This knowledge is important because fish is the main source of protein for their families. As a fisherman paddles through the branches and the canopy, he listens for the sounds of fruit dropping into the water and fish splashing. From these distinct sounds, the fisherman can locate fruit-eating fish. An individual tree might have its fruits dropping into the water for a month or more, at which time fish concentrate below it. When a rubber tree is scattering its seeds, the fisherman knows that tambaki will be in the waters below. Fishing techniques are a combination of indigenous methods and caboclo inventions developed over the last two or three centuries. The gill net is the most important modern addition. When fish swim into it, they become entangled and cannot escape. The gill net is very effective for catching large tambaki. An adult tambaki will make a good meal, even for the largest kaboklo families, which often have more than ten children. South America is known to naturalists as the fruit continent. Trees here produce an enormous variety of fruit. 
Not only are fish feeding below, but there is also a feast in the canopy. The bounty of fruit is responsible in part for the diversity of fish in the waters, and also for the large number of animals attracted to the canopy at this time of year. Monkeys are among the most important of the fruit eaters in the flooded forest canopy. Perhaps the most common fruit-eating primate is the squirrel monkey. Among the largest of Amazonian monkeys is the red howler, reaching six kilograms in weight. Though howlers can feed on several types of food, their favorite is fruit. The fruiting season is an ideal time for monkeys to have their young, as both the mother and the youngsters are guaranteed an abundance of food. The Amazon has more fruit-eating birds than anywhere else in the world. These fruit-eaters come in many shapes, sizes and colors, such as the white-throated toucan, which is as much beak as body. Here, an arasari toucan uses its massive bill as a tool for reaching and manipulating fruits. Hanging by your feet is another method to reach fruit, if you are a wakari, that is. Unlike most Amazonian monkeys, wakaris have short tails, which are of little use for grasping. Fruit pulp and seeds together supply a high energy and protein diet for the monkeys. The main fruiting season comes during the floods and lasts about four or five months. However, not all the species are in fruit at the same time. When the fruit crop of a favorite tree type is exhausted, the monkeys can turn to other species. Despite the lack of a prehensile tail, wakaris are as agile as other Amazonian monkeys and able to move about effortlessly in the flooded forest canopy in their continuous search for food. The Amazon has the largest number of monkey species in the New World. Most of the species are found, at least to some extent, in flooded forests. Many of these monkeys migrate from neighboring upland rainforest during the floods to take advantage of the abundance of fruit. One of the most enterprising monkeys to do this is the black capuchin. Nearly all of the fruits of the flooded forest orchard are forbidden to man because they are too poisonous for him to eat. However, man indirectly taps the bounty by harvesting fruit-fattened fish. During the low water period, Tambaki fasts. Now, in the flood time, they gorge themselves. After a few weeks of feeding heavily on rubber tree seeds, tambaki become very fat. A 20 kilo fish, such as this one, will have nearly one kilo of rubber tree seeds in its stomach. In the flooded forest, under a rubber tree, we see in a nutshell the interaction between man, fish and plant. When the rubber tree seeds no longer fall, both the tambaki and the fisherman must search for other ripe fruits. Some fruits, like those of the jara palm, remain green for a long time. Others, like the large fruits of the jawari palm, are already falling into the water. Fishermen bait their hooks with these jowry palm fruits.